Bombshell, the Mueller team accidentally wipes 27 of their own phones before handing them back to the Department of Justice. We'll talk about that today on Jay Sekulow Live. Live from Washington, D.C., Jay Sekulow Live. Well, if you can't manage your own phone, why should we trust you to investigate a crime? I guess they just ran out of hammers and bleaching material. Phone lines are open for your questions right now. Call 1-800-684-3110. The question is, did they obstruct justice? Did they intentionally uh, delete information from their phone because Horowitz was on the, uh, on the case? That's the question for Durham. And now, your host, Jordan Seculo. So Lisa Page, who got an email, and they were actually emailing amongst themselves at the special counsel's office about her not deleting her phone. You know what happened to her phone? Phone not found. Then they found the phone. But accordingly, uh, to the phone was restored to factory settings. So the phone was uh, restored. So that means it never got checked and it never was found. This is after there were emails sent to her and amongst the staff saying, make sure she doesn't delete anything from her phone. Peter Strzok, it says there was no, no substantive text notes or reminders. Uh, then you get to Andrew Weissman, who was basically leading the Mueller probe as their lead prosecutor. Uh, date reviewed on, on March 8th, 2018. He said entered password too many times and wiped his phone. These are supposed to be the genius prosecutors for the, for the Mueller team. So he when did they, that once. Then he did it again on, on September 27th of 2018. So in March and then again in September, he accidentally wiped his phone. And, and then by, uh, again, you go back to March 2019, uh, nothing on there, just personal, personal info. Yeah. So. Let me these are supposed to be geniuses. These They're are, wiping their oh yeah, own these phones. These were the clean. smartest guys that they had. You know, all of a sudden they had. I, I guess they had password amnesia, because everybody forgot the passwords as soon as the inspector general uh, got it. But I will tell you my all-time favorite. Can I do the Jim Quarles? Yeah. Jim Quarles was the principal deputy of to Bob Mueller. We, that's Andy, the one, the guy we work he with them. Yeah, that's the one we work with, almost literally on a day-to-day basis. Jim Quarles had something very interesting happen to his phone. Um, but before we do that, do you remember the movie Spinal Tap? It was a fictitious rock band. And in it, the drummer, and I can relate to this, they said, what happened to your drummer? Well, let me play this for you. Dozens of people spontaneously combust each year. It's just not really widely reported. Right. Yeah. Spontaneously combust. Jim Quarles' phone did exactly that. They don't know what happened. It wiped itself. It wiped itself. Spontaneously combusted the phone. Well, here's what's interesting. So all of you have phones out there, especially you watch on Facebook and Periscope. You know that there's a setting, especially on iPhones, which is what they were utilizing, um, that it says like if you enter the wrong password in 10 times, which takes hours, by the way, because the phone locks itself out more and more times. So it would take hours to do that. And you have to enter 10 different passwords that are wrong. Then the phone will wipe itself clean. That would not wipe away, by the way, the data if it was stored somewhere else. But we're now also learning is that these guys at the special counsel's office, your phone, I'm holding one in my hand, it's like the vessel, right? I could break this phone. This phone could destroy, could be destroyed right now, and I could go buy another one, plug it in, and it should have about everything on there, at least from my last update, which was probably, well, probably just happened the last hour since it's been plugged in right here because it updates itself when it's plugged in and you know, continuously. They also had no backups. So the special counsel's team, when they wiped their phone and they kept that, they kept the setting on. I actually don't have it on mine. They kept the setting on uh, that said if it d- happens 10 times, it wipes the phone entirely clean. So if you put in, intentionally put in the wrong number. 10 different wrong numbers. Over hours it would take you because the phone starts locking out and saying you can't even try for another 15 minutes. You can't even try for another 30. You can't even try for another 45. You can't try for another hour. So over 10 different An times. An intentional act will join Andy and, and Harry are going to comment on this when we come back. An intentional act to destroy evidence as to what was going on with this fake Russia investigation. And now Bob Mueller's team, the lawyers themselves, I want them questioned. Ask them what happened. Yeah, there should be questioned because things they, it doesn't just disappear. There's not an excuse for not having this data backed up anywhere at all. And it, it happening multiple times, multiple times, the lead prosecutor in this, Andrew Weissman, if he was prosecuting someone, by the way, you know, he put people in jail for things like this, and much less. So what about him? Why isn't he behind bars? Ask yourself the question, why aren't they all behind bars? This entire team intentionally deleting government documents. 1-800-684-3110. Let's talk about it on air. 1-800-684-3110. 
Listen, I know there's a lot going on. You got 50 days until an election. We got presidential debates coming up. Wildfires raging on the West Coast. A potential hurricane, tropical storm. Another one to the Gulf. Um, and uh, the, the shooting in L.A., the, the police That's officer horrible. shooting and that protest, protesting, saying we hope they die. And the, the LAPD have, having to put out a tweet saying stop blocking the hospital. Uh, stop making this noise. They're trying to do this surgery so to keep these police officers alive. You know, Joe Biden's America, by the way. Uh, obviously, some of this has gotten lost in, in, in those stories. That 27 times, we don't know if it was 27 phones, but well, we know for some of these individuals it happened multiple times, like Andrew Weissman. So 27 times, the top people on the special counsel's team Right after the Peter Strzok and Lisa Page text messages come out saying we're going to take, you know, he'll never be president and all of that. It wasn't so much about their affair. It was about how it was about we'll never let him be president. We've got the backup plan. We'll meet in Andy's op. Remember all those messages. Right then, every top official on the special counsel's team decides to wipe their phone once. And then a lot of them, it looks like, did it again as well. So they did it, they they multiple, they wiped their phones clean. And they were saying that it was done on accident, yet they all had the same excuse. They say that, you know, they put in the wrong password too many times and, and the phone wiped itself. All of them. I mean, we're talking about from from Lisa Page to to for Andrew Weissman to Jim Quarles saying his just did it on its own. I mean, these guys, some of them are are not young guys, but they're not stupid guys. Okay? They, they may not be the best at tech. But they're also they're not I mean, they're, they're, they're not the 90 years old. This okay, so this is everybody we dealt with. Yeah. Including Michael Dreeben, a former deputy solicitor FBI general agents. of the United States. Records notes forwarded to email. They have okay, special counsel press. I'm looking at this people. Yeah. But Andy, if you were to do if an individual were to do this knowing there was an investigation going on, what's the legal consequence? Well, the legal consequences are criminal prosecution for at least two statutes that I would use. One was the violation of 18 U.S.C. 2071, which makes it a felony for a custodian of an official government record, and that's what these are, to willfully and unlawfully conceal, remove, mutilate, obliterate, falsify, or destroy the same. And more apropos, perhaps, is the obstruction of justice, and that is the statute 18 U.S.C. 1512, who says whoever corruptly, and that means with an improper purpose, alters, destroys, mutilates any record, document, or other object with impair, with intent to impair the object's integrity or or the availability of that for the use of that in an official proceeding. In this case, the official proceeding being an investigation by the Inspector General of the Department of Justice. I mean, how many times Rush Atkinson, this is another one, twice, two times, per email... His phone was wiped on, on, on November 29, 2018 by accident after input of passcode too many times. Then again on June 11th, uh, uh, wiped twice. How about special counsel press office? No records on their phone. Uh, you go down to Aaron Zelinsky. Yeah, who was the, the, moved another his, principal de- deputy. Moved all of his to a, to a different uh, uh, file. Uh, Jeannie Ray, no records. Nothing on their phone. Robert Mueller, nothing on his phone. Well, that doesn't surprise me. But even nothing, not, a, not even a voicemail. That's not even a voicemail. That's true. I mean, Aaron Zebley. Isn't he the guy who sat next to Bob Mueller? He did. Right? Yes. No records. He was the principal. You met him. He was the yeah. principal no deputy. Records. No records on his phone. No, okay. none. So, so 27 at least times the phones were completely wiped. And other times when phones were looked at, all there was nothing on them. It was like the phones were never used. And there was no backup server. Okay, so they didn't even have the server like Hillary Clinton to destroy to blitz beat, they didn't even need to do that. So, because they had no backup. So think about it. They were they they people are in jail right now because of what they did, and there's no backup to their entire investigation. Yeah. So, Harry, what what do you think the appropriate response should be here? Because the thing that has me the most concerned is they knew that the inspector general was asking for this information. Absolutely. And so what we have is a simple set of facts which are grounded in the claim that an accident happened between 25 and 50 times. This is a shambolic set of facts which is worthy of a Monty Python uh, uh, skit, but for the fact that this is so serious because it involves arguably an obstruction of justice, as Andrew uh, correctly points out, 
in addition to which we may have evidence of an espionage violation, particularly 18 U.S.C. Section 793F. Keep in mind, that was the section that Hillary Clinton arguably violated, and one wonders whether or not Bob Mueller's team simply called up Hillary Clinton's team and asked for advice. Well, no, I mean, they went so far. I want to take this because I think it's important. Uh, Dan in, in D.C. online, too. Dan, welcome to J. Secchio Live. You're on the air. Hey, yeah, hi. How you doing? Uh, I just want to say on certain secure phones as well, there's another feature that if you forget or you type in the wrong password or whatever, uh, notifications will be sent to your supervisor or superintendent, which then can remotely uh, reenact or give you your password or, or turn your phone back on. But the one proof that you know that all these people did this intentionally was before they did the uh, they wiped their phones they put it in airplane mode right, and when right. it's in airplane mode Explain it that. will not notify the supervisor and they cannot remotely do what they need to to turn their phones back online and that's one proof that you know all these people did this intentionally yeah and so what airplane mode really does is is airplane mode on your phone which is it's kind of like questionable about is it necessary or not but it's supposed to be when you use your phone on a airline that you put on the airplane mode it shuts the cell service off and the only way you can use it then is by Wi-Fi. But but your phone is still on, so you can still do the pat like like Dan is talking about. You can still do your password wrong ten different times to wipe it. But you and, said that would take hours. Yes, it would take hours because uh, you've uh, you first you have to uh, put in a, a the password of wrong a wrong password that's different from the one you keep putting in. So trying different ones about three or four times, and then it starts getting like you know forty five minute delays till you can even try it again. Then an hour delay until you can even try it again. So this is not something you could just do in seconds. This is something you have to do deliberately over time. And I think as Dan just pointed out, by putting in airplane mode, it shuts off any record trail of notifications to anybody else's phone that, hey, this person is, it looks like this phone is trying to be hacked. It looks like someone is trying to illegally or wrongfully get into this phone by putting in the wrong code. That airplane mode shuts that off because you don't have service anymore. Because in airplane mode, all you have to do is, once you shut up, put it in airplane mode, you're already shutting off all cell service. Then all you'd have to do is click the Wi-Fi off, and you're offline. So here's, I guess, the, the fundamental question with all of this, though, is they know the inspector general has made the formal request for the phones because he's doing the investigation, and he wants to know what, what happened here. They also know, Andy, that this is evidence or this is information that might be relevant to later inquiries, whether it was before the Senate or the House or court proceedings, including Brady material issues that might raise, as as Devin Nunez said, in the Michael Flynn matter. Right. So this was important to keep and historically important to keep. Yet you have what appears to be, from all accounts, an intentional direct act by multiple actors to willfully destroy evidence. Yeah, I think all we need to do is put them under oath because I just to, just, just to, for people to understand, for attempts 5 through 10, there's one hour and 36 minutes of total delay time. So to, so the first four times, yeah, you can put it in. There's no delay. The phone will let you try it one more time, one more time, one more time, one more time. Okay, not. Then it starts putting in these delays yeah. so that you don't accidentally wipe a phone clean. Some kid, A kid, you know, your kid doesn't do it. A lot of people, I shut it off. I have young kids. If they grab it, they start putting in numbers. You don't, I don't want my phone wiped clean. But even if it was, I would literally just plug it back in, cloud, boom, everything is back again. We know Within a couple hours, it would be reloaded. They, they, of course, didn't have that either. So you put them under oath and say, who did this for you? Or did you spit, spend an hour and 36 minutes going through and putting wrong codes in? And you didn't just call your tech guy and say, hey, before I – because it notifies you, too. It says, this will wipe the phone clean. Hey, I'm a, I don't want to wipe my phone clean. You know, can you help me get into the phone? Of course, a tech person would be able to help them do it. So I think that's an easy easy way to put them under oath and ask them. Well, and I would do that. I would do exactly that. I would take every one of them, put them under oath, and ask them the questions. Look, I don't know the niceties of of uh, the electronic modes uh, and and the procedures. I have to admit that it's just I'm not in that uh, category uh, age wise. Uh, until about six months ago, I still had a BlackBerry. I now have an iPhone. But I do know this. If there is a way to intentionally destroy records, this was the categorically imperative proper way to destroy the records, done with intent and with well-meaning thoughtfulness 
And this was done with a concerted and directed effort on the part of this special counsel team to keep the president, uh, the investigation going, and to keep the inspector general from knowing exactly what happened. It is deplorable, but more important of all than Jay and Jordan, it's criminal. And I don't have to know a great deal more than that to make that conclusion. But I like the idea what Jordan said also. Just call these, have, have Lindsey Graham, call them up. They all wanted to hear from Andrew yeah, Weiss. Yeah, Remember, yeah, yeah. Nadler, do you think he does now? Jeff, yeah. call them all up and let's put them under oath and ask them, what'd you do to your phone? Yeah, what happened there? And did you really do it 10 times? And then it happened, you did it again, second time? I mean, it's, it, do it under oath so that if they lie, they go to jail. Because I think basically this whole team should be behind bars, it looks like, including Bob himself for letting this happen. 1-800-684-3110. You agree? Should Bob Mueller be the one behind bars? 1-800-684-3110. Because of your support, because of the support of every member of the ACLJ, one of the practice areas that we've been able to develop is Freedom of Information Act requests or FOIA requests. It's thousands of pages of paper, and in those thousands of pages of paper, you usually find a nugget. The goal here is to gather the puzzle pieces. Sometimes you don't know which ones will be important until they become important. Government agencies acting out of control. We have exposed that yep. in our FOIA litigation, and we do that every day that we bring these cases. It is your statutory right as an American citizen to have access to documents that reveal uh, how the government is functioning, how your government is functioning. Do you remember the Iran deal? There was a video about what took place on that deal and it was edited. And the edit took out the key part of what was going on. State Department, White House, editing videos to keep it from the American public. How do we know? Because our FOIA litigation got that document. We took it to the IRS. No one ever does that. And because of it, it's a very weak government agency that used to be the scary government agency. What the IRS was doing was violating the constitution and statutory law because of the litigation we engaged in. It's a different agency. They can't do what they were doing before. And they've been hiding behind in the shadows. We, these FOIAs bring them to light. All of this information came because we went to court yeah. to get the information. Many times when we make these requests, the uh, the requests actually end up in court as the bureaucracy fights back to withhold the information. But that's okay because the law is on our side. We are entitled to the information uh, that is in the, these requests that we have made. We've got the declassified list of Obama administration officials who started asking to unmask. We have caught them now. They have no one in there to protect them anymore. They were used to the bureaucracy protecting them. Those of you that support the ACLJ, this is what it's all about at the end of the day. Think we haven't been on this, folks? We've been on it. Liar! 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 All right, welcome back to JSEC Yo Live. Do we have that tune that we could play at the end of the show today? I think it'd be very appropriate. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so what we're talking about here, just if you're just joining us, 27 f times... So it's not just 27 phones, but 27 times. The Mueller team members, these are the top members of Bob Mueller's team, including Bob Mueller's phone itself, The pho their phones were wiped. This is from DOJ records. This includes people like Lisa Page and Peter Strzok, but also includes uh, the top prosecutor, you know, Andrew Weissman of the team. It includes the top deputy to, to Bob Mueller, Jim Quarles, who said his just spontaneously wiped itself clean. He didn't put in the passcode too many times. It just wiped itself clean. There was no backup server, nothing for the nowhere for the inspector general to look for information, and they think they can get away with this. Uh, but they're the ones putting people behind, you know, behind bars, you know, having FBI raid people's houses over nonviolent offenses. Remember they did that, tipping off CNN before it happens? Maybe that's why they wiped their phone cleans. Uh, they don't want people to know what they did to, to Roger Stone. How, how did the CNN no cameras know to be there for an FBI raid? And why are you raiding people's houses like that for nonviolent offenses? Again, over and over again, uh, they have been shown to be wrong. Uh, this team is now, and you know, it all starts with, you can go back to, again, it, it all starts with the first national security advisor there and Lieutenant General uh, Mike Flynn. You, and I think, and this problem started when the when the records started coming out about Peter Strzok and Lisa Page saying that that he would never, Trump would never be president. They'll never let that happen. And then they start deleting their phones. Yeah, but the interesting thing is, though, you would think because of the ethical rules involved, as at cases that were in litigation. I mean, for instance, you know, in an indictment of of General Flynn, 
You're always entitled to, a, you know, Brady material, exculpatory evidence. There, there's uh, the catalog for history. I mean, history in and of itself of what took place here. There's communications that took place. I mean, we contacted. I spoke to Jim Quarles on his cell phone. Yeah. I mean, so this is like so the, no it, record of that. Yeah, evidently There'd not. There'd be no record of your and phone you were, call I or think his. you were there. Jane Raskin and Marty were there. I mean, uh-huh. yeah. I mean, it was late at night. And all of this is wiped out. So it, it begs this question. And that is, no one, this, A, you can eliminate immediately, Harry. This is not an accident. This was intentional. Uh, you couldn't, no one's phone spontaneously combusts, as Jim Quarles is saying is did, or is there reporting uh, that that's what happened. So all of this happened. The question then is, what happens next? Now, we know that... Uh, uh, Senator Grassley wants to look at it, but this is intentional actions on behalf of the lawyers in the special counsel's office destroying the evidence of the communications. And Jordan brought up a really good one there: the tip off on Roger Stone, all of this, all these leaks, all of that's destroyed, all of that's out. What happens next? Well, one of the things that we should keep in mind is that what we have is the deliberate destruction of evidence. And it is grounded largely in hubris. And that hubris is largely covered. Um, and so you'd add the, by the media. The media has been very, very complicit in this. Imagine if the roles were reversed. And this had happened during the Trump uh, Justice Department. Uh, the media would be uh, hounding um, President Trump and his staff night and day. But at the end of the day, what we really need is for John Durham to go after each and every one of these individuals. It seems clear to me on the face of the evidence that we have deliberate and intentional premeditated misconduct by each and every member of Bob Mueller's team. And that is leadership of that team and including the leadership. And that is consistent with the fact that we have had a series of fraudulent, highly partisan investigations, including the so-called impeachment, including the investigation of Hillary Clinton. Guess what? The Justice Department, the FBI, the Special Counsel's Office, they are uh, filled with corruption, and we need to expose this to the light of day. All right, so let's go to the phones, because I think you know, everybody's got a good question about this, because no one can really understand how this could, this could have happened. Ronald. There is no way it could be right, an accident. Right, there is no way. Ronald, okay. South Carolina, on Live 5, bringing up a good point here. Ronald, welcome to JSECIO Live. Yeah, thank you very much for taking my call. Now, where I used to work at, um, they had IT guys, and and each time new workmen um, would get phones, they would have a day to come in and update the phones and connect the phones. So there's some kind of, of cloud uh, storage system somewhere that will information is to be backed up on, and 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 I see that that this. How could this go on? You got you got yeah. a general cloud, and then you've got this exclusive cloud or or secured cloud, which right. the government should have. Uh, you know I the think... government has, but but we're being told by that this team was not on a cloud, that they had no backup server, that so all the information was just on the phone. So they weren't like Hillary Clinton. Like Hillary Clinton had the backup in, server, you know, trying to break into she the had phones. To, but she had a backup server, Her own. Secretary of State. Yes, yeah. they they had to blitz beat. Remember that, all that stuff, and so to destroy the server. Because that's what you're talking about, Ron. There's it's somewhere. This this info is not just about what's on your phone. This could be any phone. I could I could delete this one right now. Plug it. Plug in it's a new one and get all of my information. So everything he, that was at least backed up the last time, which your phone is constantly doing on its own, like when it's plugged so, in and on Wi-Fi. So and this was intentional. They know that too. So they set it up. And I think that you know to make remind people that this is 2018 and 2019, not 1999, not 2002. Data doesn't disappear. They always say if it's on the internet, if it was on the internet, it's always there, except for in this case. Yeah, well, here's the thing and that I, I wonder why the IG gave up so quickly, too. I mean, I always have yeah. questions about Horowitz's whole report because he just accepted this. I mean, to me, it's why did his team not dig deeper to make remember, sure there wasn't more info there? But, but remember that um, Strzok's phone. When it was handed, pages they couldn't find, Strzok, they said, yeah, it was wiped out before we got to look at yeah. it. They, the special counsel said that. So, but uh, put, putting this in context, putting it in a legal context, if you were to do it, Andy, or I were to do that, or Jordan, or Harry, 
serious legal consequences, criminal consequences. Yes, we would be indicted and we would be looking at time in the United States penitentiary for this. And someone who uh, is in a position of authority as the members of this team were, these were 18 altogether, 27 experienced prosecuting attorneys. They are not new to the system. They understood criminal law. The Mueller was former director of the FBI. He was a lawyer. He was supposed to be in charge. He was supposed to be directing. Jimmy quarrels. Jimmy, don't tell me you did this. I can't believe that you spontaneously combusted as many times as I spoke to you and had trust and confidence in you that you would do this. Jimmy, I'm so upset with you. How could you have done this? But what you did, unfortunately, is a crime. And everyone on your team who participated in this torture of the president of the United States, because that's what this was after all is said and done. You tortured the president of the United States for two years, and now the fruits of your torture are gone in literally into thin air. We'll never see what that is again. Well, listen, Derek in Nevada, line one. We'll take Derek. You've been holding on just quickly. Oh, we only got a minute yeah, left. Let's, 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 hold, let's hold him to the coming back. I All right, think. we can hold, we can hold Derek. Okay. I, I just think that what's important to understand is that, to me, it looks like the entire Mueller team should be the ones. It shouldn't be Paul Manafort. It shouldn't be Roger Stone. Definitely not George Papadopoulos for changing something on Jeez. Facebook, by the way. It should be them in, in the prison garbs. No COVID you know, special rules for them either. They should be behind bars. And it's their own intentional actions. It's not There's an, no accident. Way it's an accident. There's no way 27 accidents. One accident you can take. <laughs> one out of like that 40 people, an accident. Twenty Twice happening to the same guy and one just spontaneously wiping, not having a backup server, putting it into airplane mode. That's all intentional acts. No accidents there. No accidents means go to jail, report to prison, be indicted. The question is, the Department of Justice have the guts to do it to its own. And I have to ask you yourself serious questions. Who cares if there's an election right around the corner? Indict the wrongdoers. Thanks to your support of the ACLJ, we have had many victories. The IRS now formally apologizing to Tea Party groups. If any group feels like they're being targeted, they can go to federal court and bring our case. That's a victory. It's one of the most significant wins in the ACLJ's history to take on the IRS and win. For more than 27 years, the ACLJ has been fighting for freedom and liberty in the United States and around the globe. These are our young people in their 20s and 30s that are doing this, are fighting for life at a whole new level to beat back the abortion juggernaut. But I actually think we're winning. This is one of the social issues we're winning. The release of Andrew Brunson. We're flying and they finally left Turkish airspace. It's like, okay, we're really out of Turkey. And, and free again. We need your help as we continue this work here in the United States and around the world. Join us online at the American Center for Law and Justice at aclj.org. Live from Washington, D.C., Jay Sekulow Live. And now your host, Jordan Sekulow. Let me remind you to have a flashback. If you're just joining us, this is something we wanted to bring out because it got reported in the news. A few interviews were done on it. And then, you know, we got wildfires, potential uh, you know, hurricane, and, and there's police shooting, uh, the shooting of police, and then people trying to obstruct those police being treated at a hospital in Los Angeles. So a lot going on. Of course, the election in 50 days, you know, which, by the way, is a long time in politics, and we haven't gotten to the first debate yet. But uh, you had this story come up that on the Mueller team, 27 different times phones were wiped completely clean. Intentionally, sometimes because they were put into airplane mode and then wrong passwords are put in 10 different times. It takes at least almost two hours to do that. Um, And so that was done a couple of times. People like Andrew Weissman, a couple of times to their phones. To Jim Quarles, who was the the top deputy to Bob Mueller, uh, he just said his phone just wiped clean on its own. He didn't do anything. It just spontaneously wiped clean. So we're talking about this, how it could be illegal. But also the fact is that they, they literally put people in jail for things like this. For invest in investigations like this. And these are supposed to be, you know, Andrew Weissman, who's a big Biden uh, donor, big supporter of Joe Biden, supposed to be like the genius prosecutor. So most of his indictments have been overturned throughout the history of his work because he's overzealous. And yeah. yet he now looks like he should be the one behind bars because it's pretty, of all the people, he's admitted, it looks like, yeah. that twice he put it, he, he could not remember. This is supposed to be a genius prosecutor. Right. Top prosecutor. Twice he could not remember his phone's six-digit password. Went through two hours without calling anybody, 
with the phone reminding him that if you keep doing this, it's going to wipe all the info. But and did it twice and wiped his phone clean so that there would be no data when he turned it over to the inspector general at the DOJ. Who should really be in jail? Paul Manafort or Andrew Weissman? Who should be sentenced? George Papadopoulos? No, Andrew Andrew right. Weissman. I mean, yeah. So here's this the, whole. I mean, we know that it was this was this stung from the beginning of the witch hunt. It was corrupt. They found nothing. They came up with nothing against the president. There was nothing there in the first place. It was all made up. Talking about, but you're all right. Talking about obstruction of justice. But remember this. Will pointed this out. Our producer, when the IRS, we when we wanted the emails right. from Lois Lerner, they said they did not have them on backup. Right. There was no server capability. Her, they her could not find her computer crashed. Her computer and mysteriously no crashed. There was no backup, Andy, and the documents weren't available. Yeah, there, there's a lot of unavailability of documents in these investigations, and it seems that it seems somewhat strange to me that that is a recurring theme. Um, learners' documents are not available now. We want to look at the documents from the texts, and messages, and telephone calls of the uh, Mueller team, and suddenly they're unavailable because they were un accidentally uh, wiped clean and you can't get to them. With And Quarles' phone was wiped itself without intervention from him. If you believe that, I mean, if you believe that, then you're the stupidest person on the earth. It's sad that these prosecutors who are charged with the administration of justice would stoop to this Andy, kind of conduct. dealt with these people for three yes. years. For three years. And it was, they knew there was no Russia collusion within months. That's what all the reports show. Right. And they try to make up this obstruction campaign, yeah, they're and the they're ones the obstruct. ones obstructing. That's it. They're making sure they'd obstruct the investigation. When we said to investigate the investigators, I mean, they're obstructing right. that investigation. But it is pointing out their wrongdoing. This alone is criminal. This alone you can go to jail for. doesn't matter what the info was that they deleted. It, they deleted it. They intentionally took government records and government documents and deleted it. And if you do that, which they obviously did, and we'll take your calls when we come back, because everyone that's listening to this that understands what we're talking about on the tech side knows this is not something that easily happens. This is not like, it is not, and it does not happen 27 times to a group of about 50 people, okay? And including spontaneously, you're just losing all your phone info. But the phone still worked fine. You're, you know, the email was fine. You just lost all your emails up until you started emailing again. I mean, that doesn't even make sense. Your phone was fine, but it, everything was lost on it. Do you know how long it would take them to go back and set up that phone? But they didn't say that. They just said, like, oh, the, all the data went away. But I could still use it fine. I mean, that's why they need to be put under oath. Every one of them. Bob Mueller on down. Let's put Bob under oath, too. Have him stumble through figuring out a phone. For the American, hey, he was, hey, he took the job to be the head of this. It's on him. Technically, it's it all is. on him at the yep. end of the day. So right. Bob Mueller should be behind bars, too, with all of his friends. 1-800-684-3110. We'll be right back. Yeah. All right, welcome back to Jay Secure Live. So we're going to start taking some of your phone calls to this. I want to take Derek's call in Nevada on line one. He's been holding on. Let's get Derek a book. Uh, Derek, welcome to Jay Secure Live. You're on the air. Uh, hello there. So here's, here's my question. If, if we're to take Jim Quills' word that the same thing happened to his phone is what happened to Spinal Tap's drummer, uh, Peter Bond. In other words, it just spontaneously it combusted. combusted. It was working, working one minute and then there's just a, a green stain, much like on the, on the, on the drum stool. Are, are, are we then to believe that, uh, that Peter Strzok's phone met the same fate as another Spinal Tap drummer, that, that it just died in a bizarre gardening accident? Did Andrew <laughs> Weissman's phone... Hey, Derek, because you, ra no, you raised this, I'm going to play, the, for people that weren't here for the first half hour of the program, there's a famous movie, the movie that Derek and I are talking about, it's called Spinal Tap, and it's about this fictitious band, and in it, they talk of, they're being interviewed, and they're being interviewed about what happened to their drummer. Constantly what? their drummers yeah, are disappeared. they always had drummers just leaving, and here was their answer. Dozens of people spontaneously combust each year, it's just not really widely reported right. yet. So, Derek, I think, I think, first of all, Jim Quarles' phone did not spontaneously disappear. It did not spontaneously wipe itself out. It did not spontaneously combust. Somebody got together, this group of prosecutors, and said, hey, we better clear all our phones out. That's, That's what right. this is about. That's this right. was an intentional act. Now, uh, Colonel West Smith has joined us. I, I want to ask this question. Yeah. Colonel Smith, if you were in the Army still, because you're retired now, and 
you had an inspector general's report going on and they wanted to talk to you when they wanted your phone and you and it was spontaneously combusted it was remote you deleted the data what happens to you oh wow in big big trouble and and there's a reason why I what's would, big trouble mean um i would be dismissed uh in the court martial yeah you could be court-martialed you certainly could have administrative proceedings brought against you it would have stopped my career Depending on what it was, you could actually, you know, go to jail for this kind of thing. What I find interesting in all of this, Jay, is that I was issued a phone by the Pentagon. I carried it for three and a half years and a computer. And it never occurred to me to delete anything because you sign a paper when that device is issued to you in which you have to acknowledge that all messages, all traffic, all documents on that belong to the federal government. Okay. And you cannot mess with that. We need to get our Freedom of Information Act team to find out what the documents were when these phones were issued. So if Ben Sisney's listening, let's get that out. What was the document surrounding the phones? We can. I also want to know about the investigation of the phone situation itself. But what did they have to sign when they got the phones? Because that will tell you an awful lot. Well, not only that, Jay, 27 deletions like this, you know, under the U.S. Code, conspiracy to commit a crime is a standalone crime right and so i think that's involved as well well this told me too if they had no backup server because they were worried about you know being being potentially hacked by the the so-called real you know, russians and the gru except for that they were the ones destroying their phones so again let me point out who do we have to worry about in our upcoming election who do you have to actually worry about it's not the russians or the chinese because you know what our government can handle them and there's their their little attempts to try and influence our elections. To be honest with you, it's our own people. They're the mm. ones. It was Hillary Clinton who deleted a server. It was an American. It was American prosecutors who 27 times conspired to delete their phones. It doesn't happen. They knew they had no backup server, so there'd be no history. There'd be no record. They had an IT administrator too. That person's on the emails, so we can bring them before. Uh, yeah, you know, before his phone. Uh, no, I mean, every time they would tell this person through email that this happened, they'd just be like, duh, 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 you know, like, no, no big deal. So, I mean, they never thought any of us would get this far. They thought that, again, they thought wrong, that everybody would just move along once they moved along, and no one is. You know why? You don't do that when people that you send people to jail. You deserve to be able to go back and look so, through their phones and see what kind of documents, what they were doing, especially when we know that there was now wrongdoing that's been admitted to by the Department of Justice. So Ben Sisney, by the way, our, who heads up our government accountability project, said he is, of course, listening to the radio broadcast, and we're going to get right, that right out. But I want to I want to follow up on the the legal consequence because Jordan, you laid out a very compelling case that they, this was intentional, that they knowingly did this. They didn't just do it once, by the way; they did it other times during the investigation. But here it comes on the heels of an inspector general being reported to find out what happened, basically to investigate the investigators. And Andy, you were a U.S. attorney. What should be happening here? Uh, the inspector, Gen first of all, the United States Attorney's Office and John Durham, who has been deputized by the Attorney General to pro to investigate this, should be looking at this. You should be issuing grand jury subpoenas, in my opinion, to every one of these prosecutors. Every one of these prosecutors should be brought before a grand jury and asked questions about what did you do with your phone and how did you delete the information? Why did you delete the information? What were the facts and circumstances surrounding it? Who directed you, if anyone, to do it? Who did you agree with corruptly to do it? Did you conspire with anybody or confederate with anybody to delete this information? Why did you do it? What was behind it? In other words, I would be grilling them before a grand jury immediately. I would be issuing subpoenas, and I would be telling them that they had their constitutional rights protected. If they want to take the Fifth Amendment in the grand jury, go ahead and do that. Assert your constitutional privilege. But in the meantime, I would be, if I was John Durham, issuing grand jury subpoenas today. I agree. I mean, I think... I think that's what should be happening. Yeah. I mean, the, the question is why is it not happening or is it or, or is it happening? maybe it's happening, but it's a little – here's why I say maybe it's happening because when Peter Strzok starts showing up on Meet the Press, you know he's in trouble. When he's pushing his book out so he has some cash to pay his legal fees, you know he's probably in trouble because former heads of counterintelligence don't usually write books a year and a half out. In fact, I'm not even sure how he got cleared to write that book. Uh, because an it's supposed, because to the, supposed to go through the and at least a like time, yes. Yeah, yeah. So, so, and he's he's making claims like the president is a Russian agent still. I mean, he's literally doing that on Meet the Press. This is a guy who and is in serious trouble, kind of. But he's almost like a Michael Cohen now.
Yeah. When they when they interview him. No one really trusts Peter Strzok. Even like even like, you know, the, the Meet the Press, he did Chuck Todd. No one really trusts him because he lied to everybody. Yeah. And when you lie to everybody, you can't really trust them anymore. It's not like one thing you got the information wrong. It's you were always telling different stories. And Senator Graham said this. He said, You're you're angry about these phones. Wait for this one. Take a listen, bite thirty five. You think you're mad about the phones being wiped? Stay tuned. Uh, we'll talk in about 10 or 12 days, and we'll see if there's something else you could get mad about. Just stay tuned. He's the head of the Judiciary Committee of the Senate. He's not just making up nope. you know, threats. So this is obviously like tip of the iceberg off outrageous. Not even. And and that's what I think. But <laughs> but people do want to see. They saw that one indictment, and then they saw the one uh, you know who admitted to the, the crime, kind of, but uh, Klein Smith. Yeah. But people want to see some bigger names. But they're go not going to. Th- this case is not rising or falling on that FBI lawyer. No, no. So I mean, th- there, there's no way here. But he, here's the, here's the thing. I want to. I'm just. I think this is important for everybody and our listening audience to understand. These were the lawyers in charge of a special counsel's office, which was basically a special prosecutor with the goal of taking down the sitting president of the United States. And their phones, while there are cases being litigated by their office. And while an inspector general has been appointed and is investigating the investigators, while all of this is taking place, mysteriously, as the phones are asked for, they spontaneously combust or they wipe them out or they have, as I said in the first half hour, all of a sudden they have a form of amnesia where they can't remember. These geniuses, these top lawyers, the best lawyers, prosecutors in the country, couldn't remember all of them at the same time, could not remember their passwords, Wes. Sounds like a conspiracy to me, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, that's a conspiracy. I, I think I think Lindsey Graham framed it well, you know, with a tongue-in-cheek remark, and that is apparently they were out of hammers and bleach bit, and so they had to start deleting information from it. But we already know that with the Mueller team, there was rampant ineptitude and corruption. Think about this. You know, one of the emails that was referred to in the Mueller report implied that the Trump administration had advised a low-level staff person to reach out to Russia. But when you read the full context of it, it was just the opposite. The Trump administration had advised that low-level person do not reach out to Russia. But in the Mueller report, it implies the opposite. Well, let me tell you this. My colleague John Dowd, they, and you remember this? They put a transcript of a partial transcript of a conversation he had with another lawyer that was under a joint defense agreement. And they edited it out so that it sounded like John was saying something that would have been inappropriate when we got the full t- – we knew that was incorrect. When we got the full c- transcript, of course, that's not what it said at all. And you'll never know what it what, – th- that, They said that, they were trying to try th- the lawyers. That probably yeah. happened multiple times. Yeah. And now the original source material that would uncover that is gone forever and is not – you're not going to be able to find it because it's not, as Jordan pointed out, preserved anywhere other than on those phones which have been wiped clean. I am appalled at this. It is very difficult for me to really grasp the gravity of the situation. These career prosecutors intentionally wiping clean their phones, emails, text messages, phone conversations that may have been recorded so that the inspector general and the public cannot get to the bottom of what was a corrupt investigation, corrupt from the beginning. And as the Greeks say, the fish stinks from the head down. That's Bob Mueller. He's the head of the fish. I think Bob Mueller should be have, have an FBI squad show up to his house today or tonight. Let's do it really early in the morning. You know, rip, while his wife's there, rip him out of bed, and, and uh, you know, throw him behind bars. Let's call start. It. Let's start. Yeah. Well, let's call Fox. Yeah. I don't see CNN to get any extra viewers, but what Fox News to get the viewers, right? So we'll call Fox News. They'll be out there with their correspondence, and then we'll wipe all of our phones, and we'll be fine. Let Bob Mueller and his team go to jail. Right? I mean, that should be that's equal equal justice under law. Right? Equal justice under law. So it should be able to do the same thing. 1-800-684-3110. We come back. We'll take your phone calls. Bob Mueller and his group, yes, they all should be behind bars for years. We'll be right back. All right. Welcome back to Jay Secchio Live. So we're going to focus on now is taking your phone calls at 1-800-684-3110. That's one 800 684 one one zero. And Beth on Facebook wrote it. Why didn't they just ask their eight year olds to help them unlock their phone? Well, because How did if, they not if, if you gave remember your, their passwords. So if you gave it to your eight year old, here's the truth: your eight year old wouldn't spend an hour and a half with this device. They would move on. They would like move on to something else. They, you wouldn't be able to keep their attention that long. That's true. But but most but it's actually set up so that if if someone's intentionally trying to get into your phone and it's bad, then it would wipe itself. Yeah. And 
that it's enough time to where if it was your eight-year-old who picked it up, it, they're not going to do it enough to where they would accidentally wipe your phone. Right. And that's how the system is set up. And it doesn't really matter at the end of the day because you're all on the cloud. None of us, by the way, have phones. There, you would have to go through a lot of work to have phones that were not backed up somewhere. I mean, ter- even just buying one at the store that is not backed up on some data server. So you'd have to do a lot, which they did that because they had the tech people doing that for them. But they knew to put it into airplane mode. They knew to take all these different steps. And that, again, shows intent. It shows intentional conduct to wipe Mm. down the phone. You can't accidentally put your phone into airplane mode. You can't accidentally then put in 10 different wrong. And they have to be 10 different wrong passwords. So each time you do it, you can't put in the wrong password 10 10 times. times. It won't do it. Yeah, that what, what you you've laid out. The numbers that are different. What you've laid out, Jordan, is a very good case. And of they're intent. six digit. The intent, you know, if I was prosecuting this before a jury, that's exactly the kind of argument that I would be making. All the things that you said, one after the other, which collectively go to prove intent and a corrupt motive here. This is not an accident. Well, also the only time you actually have to put in the hard numbers on your phone is if you restart your phone, because then uh, if you restart your phone. Uh, you can't just do it by touch or that the phone just sees your face. So you have to restart it, put it into airplane mode. So you get off Wi-Fi, uh, you get mm-hmm. off uh, cell data. Probably you turn so that no one gets notified this is happening. There's no record of that. You know, you shut the Wi-Fi off and then you start doing the 10 times, you know, and then you've got it set to where it will wipe. You can actually take that setting off your phone very easily. Um, it's just something that Apple offers. I mean, so it's not like these guys, these are not geniuses here. G- genius criminals. Don't get easily caught like this. These are these are these are supposed to be the best of the best, they're the dumbest of the dumbest. But we knew that the whole time because they wasted two years of their life investigating something they knew wasn't true, and they would never get the president on. Knew that we'd all find out that, but they did. We just didn't want to see how their, their stupid text to each other, or their criminal text to each other, like Peter Strzok. Okay, I mean, and Andrew Weissman, big fundraiser for Joe Biden. Don't forget, these are Joe Biden's people. Yeah, these, these are the are, people he wants to put in. Justice. Listen, if they don't go to jail, they're going to end up running the DOJ. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's right. the truth. Yeah. So either they get they get indicted, or they're going to be your next you know your next deputy attorney general and attorney oh, general. Mike Draben was the uh, deputy solicitor oh, general. He'll be, right the, back, he'll be the solicitor general. And Weissman too, it was the top fundraiser for Biden. Got a little controversy because they were like, "Does that look good?" But he hasn't stopped fundraising for him. They just didn't do the live event with him, which would have been absurd. A guy who was putting Trump people in jail. Is gonna is gonna start fundraising for his opponent. You got Peter Strzok, who got fired from all of this, including the special counsel's team. He's writing a book and saying that Trump is a, a Russian agent still. I mean, it's like th- these guys are worse than Adam Schiff. But th- you know, I'm telling you, if you don't take action on them, they will be running the government again, and it will just it'll be just like the lowest learner of the IRS. This will yeah. this will be the norm, the Hillary Clinton norm. America rejected this once. They said we're not going to take this servers being destroyed who can't ever back up a computer except for if it was a a, a private person you would be in jail for many years no the best lawyers couldn't get you out of that if you were intentionally deleting documents while the government was investigating you the best lawyers can't get you out of that one they may be able to get you reduced sentences but you intentionally were doing it you're going to jail for some period of time these guys did it knowing that there was a government investigation and thought they could get away with it, and now it's all out there, and, and they're they're making and some of them and are there were lying. people being prosecuted. Don't forget yeah, that yeah, there were people, people that they were prosecuting while all of this was going on, and they're destroying yeah. evidence. Yeah, so right, let's go to the call. phones. Pat in Florida, online two. Pat, welcome to Jay Secchio Live. Hi, hey guys, uh, thanks for taking my call. Uh, Jay, the frustration here is once a week, twice a week, we're seeing more criminal garbage being exposed from the special prosecutors team, and yet the wheels of justice. Just sit there, sit there, and sit there. When is something, you know, Graham says 10 or 12 days. I've heard that before. I think all of us have. When is something going to happen? When the wheels of justice don't uh, grind quickly. I mean, they grind slowly. So that's, I mean, it's part of what you you have here. There is an investigator going, a big investigation going on by John Durham, a very respected uh, U.S. attorney. There has been a COVID pandemic in the middle of this that affected the grand jury's ability to meet. So, you know, I, I, I know it's frustrating. It's frustrating for everybody. But at least the information is getting out there. Because Jordan made up a very good point. 
These people are going to either be in real trouble or they're going to be running the Department of Justice. I could name you the Attorney General or yeah. at least the head of the Criminal Division. Well, Sally Yates will be the Attorney yeah, General. Yeah, she'll be the Attorney General. Oh, my God. The Criminal Division will be headed by Andrew Weissman. Yeah. And, and Mike Treatman will be the Solicitor General of the United States. You remember all the Enron prosecutions? They all got overturned, all those kind of things. These were all Andrew Weissman. All yeah. his prosecutions get overturned. He's the initial guy, but when they go to appeals courts, they all get overturned because of his wrongdoing. Usually. Yes, it's usually his misconduct yes. that gets into trouble. I want to ask this to Wes because you, you mentioned the thing which we're looking into now, that you had agreements you signed. Yes. And those agreements said basically this is the government's property? Absolutely. And it informed me also that to destroy government records is a, a, a crime punishable, as the affidavit that I signed said, by fines or imprisonment. And you signed that before you take the device out of I, the I IT I want to office. see if those exist. They, they did that back when I was an intern at the Department of Justice. Yeah. I mean, this is back in the early 2000s where computers and systems, where you, know, you didn't even get devices. They were just the, the big computer, you know, at your desk. And every time you signed in with your account, mm. you, it said that. It said you can't delete anything. Absolutely. You can't del so you can't delete. You can't, like, you can't go in and try to erase your, his your history. Uh, every document on there, because it's the, it's the, pe it's the people's document. It is not yours. And and they're talking about this. They're talking about the computer that's on that's in front of you, or the the. They're not talking about your personal cell phone. This is your government cell phone. All these guys also had personal cell phones. The law's on a little bit more iffy on that. By the way, unless you know you're under investigation, if you know you're under investigation, it wouldn't just be your government one that would you have to worry about. It would be your personal phone as well. If you had any communication, which you know they did on their personal phones about any of this or anything that could be potentially relevant. Let's go to Paul in New York, Line 3. Paul, welcome to Jay Secchio Live. Yeah, God bless the ACLJ. i I just uh, wondering why is it that these phones were not confiscated prior to uh, what uh, was what this uh, whole investigation was yeah no they were they, they were eventually confiscated i mean they were they, they were put back into service they were look i mean lisa page and peter strock's phone they did the standard operating procedure on their phones even though their emails and texts were subject of an investigation here's the problem they let that happen yeah i mean they 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 let it be set but the government let it be set back to factory settings yes so you had the tech person not raising any red flags either they were in on this too they should go to jail so it's not just lawyers should go to jail. It should be that probably everybody worked there, including even like the we had FBI agents. Sometimes you know, they would have to like deliver documents to us. They were like with under lock and key. Yeah, literally, they're on this list and their phones were wiped. Really? They should go to jail. I mean, these people should go to jail. This was the entire team. The team that came to I mean, our they office. Had everybody's wiped. Yeah, these are just the ones we know about. These are only the people we know about. A lot of this is blacked out. A lot of this is blacked out. So again, folks, 1-800-684-3110 is their number. We took a lot of calls today. We have to keep talking about this, keep the pressure on. And I think also we, you got to send that message to, to Durham. Is it, you, know, you cannot say, oh, there's an electric coming out. I can't take action on this. It's been years. Take action when you need to take action. Because it's wrong, is wrong, it's wrong, is illegal, is illegal. doesn't matter what election is coming up. We will talk to you tomorrow on Jay Secular Live.